By time you reach the middle of your sort of wakeful period, it's too late. You won't be able to shift your clock and your cortisol will start drifting later and later. This is why it's vital to get this light on a regular basis to get that cortisol released early in the day. That sets you up for optimal levels of energy. Okay, so we have cortisol and we have epinephrine and their net effect is to increase energy. So first of all, I want to give you a tool that will help you regulate cortisol and can also help stave off certain patterns of mental illness. Now, of course, it's not going to cure mental illness on its own, but it can support healthy state of mind and can help reduce unhealthy states of mind, including depression. So the first tool is to make sure that your highest levels of cortisol are first thing in the morning when you wake up. One way or another, every 24 hours, you will get an increase in cortisol. That is non-negotiable. That is written into your genome. That increase in cortisol is there to wake you up and to make you alert. It's to stimulate movement from being asleep, presumably horizontal, to getting up and starting to move about your day. And I've said it before, but I will say it again, the best way to stimulate that increase in cortisol at the appropriate time is that very soon after waking, within 30 minutes or so after waking, get outside, view some sunlight. Even if it's overcast, get outside, view some sunlight, no sunglasses, never look at any light so bright that it could damage your eyes, but do that for two to 10 minutes. If it's very bright, two minutes. If it's not so bright, 10 minutes. Do that because in the early part of the day, you have the opportunity to time that cortisol release to the early part of the day, which will improve your focus, it will improve your energy levels, and it will improve your learning throughout the day. It will also prevent a late shift in cortisol increase. And late shifted cortisol, meaning cortisol that increases around 8 or 9 p.m., is a signature feature of many depressive disorders, including major depression, anxiety, and that, of course, correlates with things like insomnia, etc. I don't know how many of you are already doing that, but it is vital to do. Now, I mentioned sunlight even on cloudy days. And there are specific reasons for that. Going outside and getting some sunlight requires that I also tell you how long and under what conditions. I've said looking through a window is not as good. It takes 50 times longer to get as much light, etc., etc. Many, many questions have told me that I'm not being specific enough. So I'm going to give you the data. And from the data, you will understand exactly how long you need to do this each day. On a sunny day, so no cloud cover, provided that the sun is not yet overhead, It's somewhere low in the sky. Could have just crossed the horizon, or if you wake up a little bit later, it could be somewhat low in the sky. Basically, the intensity of light, the brightness, is somewhere around 100,000 lux. Lux is just a measurement of brightness. On a cloudy day, it's about 10,000 lux. Okay, so tenfold reduction. But bright artificial light, very bright artificial light, is somewhere around 1,000 lux. And ordinary room light is somewhere around... 100 to 200 lux and it has to do with how much light scatter there is so even if you have a very bright bulb sitting right next to you that's not going to do the job your phone will not do the job not early in the day to get the cortisol released at the appropriate time you need to get outside so let's just set a couple general parameters if it's bright outside and no cloud cover the light can be indirect you don't have to be staring into the sun please don't damage your eyes get outside for 10 minutes or five minutes should suffice but 10 minutes is sure to suffice if it's a cloudy day dense overcast you're probably gonna need about 30 minutes if it's light cloud broken cloud cover it's probably going to be somewhere between 10 and 20 minutes and if you can't get outside or you're on an airplane and it's bright overhead artificial lights or ordinary room lights it's going to take you about six hours of light and by time you reach the middle of your sort of wakeful period it's too late. You won't be able to shift your clock and your cortisol will start drifting later and later. This is why it's vital to get this light on a regular basis to get that cortisol released early in the day. That sets you up for optimal levels of energy. It sets you up for great sleep, but today's not really about sleep. It's more about energy. That cortisol pulse and the stress that you might feel early in the day from having a little bit extra energy, that is the energy that you want in order to move about and learn and do and do various things. That is a healthy level of energy. So please try and get that sunlight 
if it's within your protocols to do that and try and get sufficient sunlight first thing in the morning, again within the first hour. That's the best way to make sure that you time your cortisol appropriately. I'm presuming at this point that you're getting your morning light to time your cortisol increase. I'm presuming that you want more energy or that you want to increase your immune system. And what I'm suggesting is that you pick from the palette of exercises that are out there or tools that are out there to increase epinephrine. There are a lot of ways to do that. You can do that, as I mentioned, through cold water, through exercise. You can even do that by having confrontations with other people. At a biological level, it is identical. The prerequisite here is getting an increase in adrenaline released from the body. Now, the simplest way to describe how to do that would be in the context of cold water or a breathing protocol. Let's presume cold water. So let's say you decide you're gonna take a cold shower. You get into the cold shower, and if it's cold enough, that will be stressful. You will experience an increase in epinephrine. It will increase your alertness. Now you're using this as a practice, as a tool to build, you could call it resilience, but the ability to stay calm in the mind while being stressed in the body, epinephrine's in the body. And you do that by subjectively trying to calm yourself. Now you can do that by telling yourself it's good for you, by emphasizing your exhales, anything that you can do to try and stay calm despite the fact that you are in a heightened state of alertness. You could do this with exercise, you could do this with music, pretty much anything that will give you a really heightened state of alertness offers you the opportunity to try and stay calm in the mind. What you're trying to do at a mechanistic level is to have adrenaline released from the adrenals but not have adrenaline epinephrine released from the brainstem to the same degree. So you're not just trying to buffer this. You're not trying to say, oh, this is good for me. This is good for me. I'm going to grind this out. You're not trying to grind it out. You're trying to move through this calmly while maintaining alertness. You're not trying to zone out necessarily, although maybe that helps. You're not trying to distract yourself. What you're trying to do is shift cognitively your relationship to the somatic, to the body stress response. Now, I'm sure some of you out there are shouting, yeah, that's exactly like whatever, whatever, whatever. I agree. This is, in many ways, a self-directed kind of stress inoculation, but we're not talking about this as stress inoculation. We're talking about this as a way to increase energy and focus. And the reason is that epinephrine, when released in the body, has a profound effect on the immune system. And when released in the brain, has a profound effect on the ability to learn and remember information and to be alert. And so we're talking about splitting the location, separating the location from which you have epinephrine adrenaline released. Okay, so let's say you are doing this practice simply to wake up. Okay, cold shower will do that. Exercise will do that. 